Uh, so I'm, my, my name is Debbie Robbins and I'm an aerialist and a Pilates teacher. And so I teach aerial Pilates, which is um, using the hammock basically um, mm -hmm. for the Pilates method. But it's, it works with, so this is obviously like a, this is like a short piece here. Um, so aerial for anyone that doesn't know is all like the dance in the air. Um, and so, yeah, so it's just aerial Pilates basically and the company is Air Control Pilates. Nice. That's, uh, this is fascinating for me because this is so <laughs> far, so far in the movement spectrum for me <laughs> from like yeah. lifting weights and, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Pilates yeah, is yeah. as far, as far as I come in terms of that that distance to where you're at. So uh, tell me more about this. Like, how did yeah. you even get into this? Yeah, so, um, and it is, hey, it's extreme. Like it's, um, you know, out of all the, the, the sports and things that challenges your body, it's, um, it's, it's pretty out there. Uh, so have you done any, <laughs> any aerial? Or I uh, no, but apparently I must try it according to Misty. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have all different apparatus. So that's the obviously most people know the trapeze, and you've got single trapeze and double trapeze with two people, and yeah, you've got yeah. silks, which is just like you would have just one piece of silks, or it gets called fabric or tissue, um, yeah. and then you've got like straps, and um, you've got chains, you've got hoop, you've got like there's loads of different apparatus, but. Um, I basically, first of all, originally uh, trained in fitness crazy. years ago. What's that? Yes. It, I just say that's crazy yeah, how much stuff is like attached to this. Like, it's like, okay. Yeah. The, I, well, I trained in fitness first and then um, uh, in, in the UK and I did... Um, uh, just, yeah, just oh, yeah. reading the comments. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. What's Debbie saying? We met because of our interest in silks. Yeah. I uh, love the Pilates thoughts. Yeah, mind's body controlology completely. Yeah, Debbie. Um, yes, Debbie. Yeah. We're going to speak more about that in a minute. Well. Yeah, I, definitely. I can't, I, I can't imagine you not being present in your body doing something that dangerous. Like, you, you can't check out for a minute while you're doing that. No. No. no, you're like, you're, you're in, you you're are in, in the moment, you're in it. There's, there's yes. no like, you have to, you know, make your body really think about it. It's like that happens. Yes. It's totally like, yeah. But it's, it's crazy fun. Like, it's amazing. Like, it's just draws you in. It's fun. It's like, um, I've jumped ahead. Sorry, you asked me how I got into it. Um, <laughs> I did fitness, first of all. I get too excited about it all. Um, I, I did fitness first and then I, uh, I lived in Australia. I moved to Australia and did fitness over there for five years. And um, I was only, it was only when I was like 23 and I was in pain. Um, I had been uh, done fitness for years and I was a cheerleader uh, through fitness. And I just basically did, you know, all high intensity. And my lecture at the time, like this is a few years ago, uh, so maybe like 20 years ago, not saying of the month. Um, and she was like, oh, do, you should do Pilates. You would really like that. And I was like, just young. Hey, I was like, you know, 17, 18 at college. And I was like, I'm not doing that. That's boring. Like it was too right. slow for me. Too slow, yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't even know what it was and I judged it when I was young. So I was just like, nah. Like I like, you know, dance and cheerleading and fitness and that kind of thing. But she planted the seed. So it just shows you the power of words sometimes. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. And I went to Australia and um, I was in pain. I was like really lordotic. I was like, you know, tilted, pelvis, all that jazz. And I, um, yeah, and I was just in, in, in pain. And then a friend of mine did Pilates and she was just like, I tried loads of other things. And again, I went to this like, slow class and I was like yes. in you know in a health club at the time and you know took the class and um I kind of gained from it and like I just I guess I it was like my first taster and then I ended up doing one-to-ones over there with like a physio and all on the apparatus and I was kind of like well this is this is I did it for me like and I was like yes. this is the only thing that is making me pain free like um and I had been seeing physio, I'd done, you know, podiatry, I did like, you know, massage, all that type of stuff. And so mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I kind of want to learn about this. And then I 
you, you know, in, merging it in with my fitness. And it's, I think it's, I think it's so fascinating that you can have fitness and then these elements, these like key yes. elements of Pilates that missing, they're missing from so many like, like areas. Right. Um, but that's our nugget. It's like brilliant for us mm -hmm. uh, as Pilates teachers. So, um, yeah, so I started doing that. And then um, I basically just like stepped into it more and more. And then I came back to the UK. Um, and I, again, I, I, you know, kept studying and training and, and doing fitness. Um, I came back to Thailand and did Thai massage and Reiki. And, you know, I was like open to wherever my life was going to go. But it was, yes. again, it was just always the Pilates that drew me in, drew me in, drew me in. And I came back to the UK and I decided I just was like, I, I want to be like a dance artist. I, I'd always wanted to train in dance. So I trained in dance and I did a year of it. And I was like, nah, still not like I can. I just want a little something, something. And they did, mm. we had aerial classes. And so I started in 2008 um, in Edinburgh. And then like many people, that's, that was just the beginning. You just get addicted. Just, yes. But that's because a fascinating like, journey at the same time, right? Like you, you're all over the world and different movement practices within that mm. realm and you're looking for something, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, massively. But I didn't really know. It was like, I guess I wanted movement, but spiritual, but... Um, and then I also wanted to really help people and know that I had. And I kind of felt yes. like when I was teaching aerobics, you know, I was on this stage and I was bouncing around in energy, but it was like, I was like, I want to have more impact yes. on people, you know, like everybody was like, yes. oh, you've got so much energy. And I was like, I, I want, you know, I want to give people light bulb moments. It, it you know, it's, yes. Yeah. Well, okay. So Debbie, talk about that word impact. I mean, that is really one of my guiding principles. Like I do things yeah. because of the impact that it's going to have. Yes. On, on people. Yes. You know say? Like that's just my thing. So even more so than like, if you offer me a job that's going to pay me massive amount of money, but I'm going to have like no actual human touch impact on people. Oh. I'd probably decline I'm because out. I'm like, that's yeah, it doesn't do it. So what you're talking about, if you're on yeah. a stage and you're giving people energy and then you feel good and they walk out and they're all hyped up for the day, that's great. But then that yeah. fizzles out. But when you yeah. have, when you could do what we can do through Pilates or through aerial, just getting people to feel different in their body and that sticks. For me, mm -hmm. that feels like mm -hmm. I'm having a greater impact. You yeah. know what I mean? Then if I was just teaching, I mean, whatever it is. And for everyone else, whatever that measure is for you, that's your measure. But I think I got, I'm same thing as you. I feel like the impact is a piece for me. Like what's going to allow me to have the greatest impact with people? Yeah. I think because it's like, we know that it's um, energy. So you want your energy yep. to flow and you, then you want it to like go somewhere and to mean something. Um, yes. And your words, yeah. the practice. Power of the words as well. Power of the words, yes, exactly. And words, especially too, for me. Like, I don't. If I feel like someone's not going to hear me, I'm not yeah. as inclined to give them that feedback. So my words are just going to die. They're going to leave my mouth and die. They're not actually going to actually do anything for the person. So I'm hesitant to just throw that out there. So I, I have a question for you then. Would question you, away. Would you um, believe in the power of your words and say something, knowing that it? that person might not hear it at the time, but they mm. might in like a year or two years? That's a great question. And this is part of my journey because I, there was a time when I would not give it to them because I figured they're not gonna hear it now. Yeah. Uh, and now it's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna throw it out there because truth is truth and maybe it, it'll resonate with them at some point in their life. So here you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's, yeah. My, that's my learning in that, right? And then the other piece too is the fact that like the, I'm is in a sense you're doing it for yourself. Like when you throw when you give that, like you feel better because you've given instead of bottling it up and just letting it just kind of rot inside mm. of me, mm. I'm giving it away, right? So that's the other piece too. And you're sitting in your truth as well. If you right. are saying it in the moment, then you're saying what you think and feel at the time. And it's not, yes. obviously you have to, you know, you have to be mindful in the way that you deliver it for the yes. person for it to be a book. You know, are yes. they gonna read the book or not? Right, absolutely. Uh, if anyone has any comments on that, just please put it in the comment section. Um, yeah, because I, yeah. I agree with you 100% on that. And it's, um, yeah, that's, that's something that I, I, you know, I've kind of deal with from time to time because you feel that, you definitely feel like, okay, well, 
yeah, that truth. You want to live that truth and you want, and your experience. So that's what I'm going to say too. It's my experience of it, or my feelings, right? So it's valid because it's my experience that I, I'm sharing, right? As opposed to just throwing daggers at somebody. Like you're, I think you're coming from a place yeah. where you'd hope that, you know, it's, it's well intended, not, you know, malicious, right? So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know it's, how a seed. it's a seed. Yeah. It is a seed. Yeah. And I think, I guess, because I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, I've definitely been on the receiving end of people planting a seed. And I, I mean, even at the time, I might have been like, no, actually, actually, I was. I was that for Ariel Pilates because people were like, I was doing stuff in the hammock. And they were like, oh, Ariel Pilates. And I was like, no, 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 it's not a thing. No, mm -hmm. it doesn't like happen. And I really dug my heels in. And that, that was people good saying to me about planted seeds. Yes. And I was like firmly like no, <laughs> and now look. <laughs> and now look, right? So I don't know anything about the aerial Pilates world. Are, are there other people doing this? Are you like considered like an authority on this, doing teacher training, and just like bringing uh, people up in this? Or are there other people in the world who kind of have that same ideology? Yeah. When it comes do, to this? do you know what? I think you you can never claim. I'm the only one and you don't want to True. either True. because yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, you just, you know, we're way more connected now because of the internet um, as well. I know that when I first initially started um, doing it, because I trained in um, Ariel in 2008 and mm -hmm. then I basically started playing around with the hammock in 2013, which is what, that's like eight years I've been doing it. But even then I was like, I, I was like looking for courses. So I thought, oh, I'll find a course. Okay. And I couldn't find a thing. That was in 2000 and maybe like 11, 12 or something. Um, and then I just, I, I basically, Ariel is like incredibly extreme. And I trained really, really hard. And so it can, uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. my, she's my chili dance. It's amazing. Yes. Um, yeah. And it, 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 I mean, there's not like, I didn't find anything that will, you know, challenge your body in the most, you know, strength, flexibility range, like alignment as well, because you, you, because it's scary, your body, yes. it's how your body reacts in fear. Like naturally you, you're hanging in the air and you're doing like dangerous things, which, you know, you, you learn stepping stones. So you do it in a, in a safe way, but it's, it's doesn't, you never take away fear. It's like, right. you know, healthy. Um, but then it's how your body reacts to that, you know? So if you've got a slightly stronger bit, of course you're gonna, or you're gonna hold tighter, or you're gonna, you know, so you, then you're creating imbalances. And there's mm -hmm. nothing that um, challenges you. It, 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 like it's intense. And, um, and we have a joke like in, in aerialists that it's like, oh, it, it breaks you, you know? Oh, my body's broken and all this kind of thing. And yes. so I personally was looking for some, you know, and I had Pilates world here and I had aerial world and it was like, uh, you know, I did the thing of like, I should, you know, I, sh I should be able to fix myself. I should know better. And, you know, and you, you bounce between the two. But essentially, right. there wasn't something in the middle, you know? It was like yeah. Pilates and then Ariel. But it was like, you know, to use the same fabric, to use the same material, to be doing similar positions and movements is essentially over the time what's kind of helped. Um, yes. And, yeah, so I guess it's um, it's just, yeah. You, you, yeah. You're always learning, aren't you? Like from yourself Absolutely. or others. Yeah, and, and I was going to say, that circling back to what you were saying earlier about fitness and like the missing pieces that, that mm. Pilates brings, like mm. that's, you know, that's almost like my, the, the line that I use, like my, my stick is like, it's, it, it's the missing link for your workouts, right? It's like, mm. it makes you strong in your weakest, strong in, you know, your weakest links type thing, uh -huh. that kind of vernacular, right? So you, uh -huh. you get that, okay, as long as I'm doing bench press and squats, there's going to be some small muscles that are never, ever going to be touched that are, you know, you're only going to find when you start doing your legs in the springs or you start doing tower work or you start doing mat work in certain ways. So that's kind of the thing that pull from, in my case, pulls men in to say, okay, this is going to train you and make you strong in different ways. Yeah. Right. Than yeah. the ways that you think. And I think it, as soon as people start doing it, naturally their, their mind is like, whoa, that's a place I need to work on. You know, it, 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 if, you, if it's done right, then you, 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 know, you just feel the places physically in your body and then mentally. And it's, yeah. you know, I guess if you find an area like that, you, it's a natural thing in your body to, and, and mind to be like, well, let me work on that, you know? Yes, 
Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, so talk about some of the pushback that you've got as you marry this Ariel and Plotty's world well, together. That was my, again, that was my fear. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I guess that's why I dug my heels in. And so I've been very aware of that. Um, and I had, like, I had so much self-doubt as well. So, you know, I, I originally, um, I mean, I guess I make it m myself sound like um, super confident going from cheerleading and then to aerial because it's all performance stuff. But uh, I think as much as you sometimes are, you know, in that realm, you're, you're, you're equally kind of like uh, vulnerable. So yes. I'm definitely not like, a, a, it might come across as that, but like, a, like super confident. So I, I, I definitely was like really... Um, uh, it was my fear. It was my huge fear, you know, to to mm -hmm. um, to, to be. Uh, mm. Yeah, do you know what? I slowly had to just take stepping stones myself. It was like I had to yes. understand, like, understand it deeper and deeper. So I, I went slowly, and I had incredible people in Scotland that are supportive here. And um, mm -hmm. there was physios and osteopaths and Pilates teachers that came to the classes, and I was like, you know, give me feedback. Like I wanted someone to like, you know, challenge me. Like what's not yes. right? What is right? Like what's and all along the way, yes, there's, you know, I, I, I think I've questioned, I've wondered, I've done all that, but like behind mm -hmm. the scenes. So then it was, it's really just been small stepping stones. Um, and I'm very aware of safe spaces. Like I'm not yes. going to put myself in a situation where someone's going to project. And, yes. uh, or if they do, then I'll, I'll call, You're aware. call it out. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it, 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 it's, there's not been too much pushback. And I think um, I'm really grateful for that. I mean, I've had a couple of things, but then you quickly understand that it's that, is that person asking because they're intrigued and they want to learn, or is it that they want to, they're, they're, they're insecure and they want to. Um, Tear you down. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, yes. yeah. Yeah, no, sorry, because that's, and that's exactly it. And that's why I asked that question because, you know, mm. remember what, uh, what Raphael Bender said at the Brain Conference? Like, I'm still, I wrote the, the quote down because, like, we're trying to stand out with our business, but at the same time, we're too busy mm. trying to fit in. Yes. Yes. And, you know, that really resonated with, with me. And I think about you with that quote because everyone does Pilates, but then everyone also has other stuff that they're really, really passionate about. And when you mm. start to blend those things together, it's going to be something that's new and different. And then how do mm. we, how do we do that standing up, but then at the same time, mm. quote unquote, fit in. So yeah. I like how you said, like you ask questions and you got, it's not like you're getting validation, like you needed to, so, someone to give you a seal of approval, but you got feedback to be able to make it palatable. So you make it so mm. that people see where it's coming from and where it's connected mm. and how this is different at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. But do you know what? That journey's just got richer and richer and richer. So obviously I yes. just slowly stepped into it. And I, you know, I, I, I did, I taught for three years before delivering a teacher training. Um, Thank you. Thanks for saying that. <laughs> because people are just like, <laughs> I'm going to start a teacher training program. You're like, well, maybe you should just chill for a year. Um, I love that you yeah. just said thank you. That was such a moment for me of like, okay, cool. Yeah, I did like, it's like, <laughs> uh, you because you, you you know you're on your own you just what you're just like you know to like figuring out what is what is what is yeah um so yeah and then and do you know what though i even when i first started teaching it was only i don't know if you can see the hammock here but this is it at like mm -hmm. what are called a high height so it's on like okay. hip height but yes um i actually delivered the it wasn't until i delivered the teacher training um, once and then I started taking it down low. Now I realize that the richness of the work is actually with the hammock even lower. So, um, uh, okay. it, it, I mean, and even now, you know, it's still growing in its, in its, in its richness and its work. And it's like, it never will is what I've realized now. I think I kept being like, okay, when is it going to be boxed? You know? And it's like, <laughs> oh, I get it. It just never right. does. Like it, it just, never does. No. Right. Well, I love the word right. richer, um, you know, in saying that it's getting richer. And think about like what we were saying about working out and training, like the more repetitions you get, 
the easier it becomes. And then you can add more variables in and then you feel more comfortable with it. And then you're not thinking about the first steps anymore because you're thinking about its progression. Like there's a richness that comes to our movement practice the more we do it mm. that you're finding in finding your voice in what you do the longer you do it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, hugely. Yeah. Like um, I think as well because when you're teaching teachers, that that's actually been a, a really um, – uh, interesting uh, curve and journey for me as well because um, you know when you start teaching teachers they're they are the ones asking questions you know during the teacher training because they're intrigued and interested and that would throw up then more questions for me that I hadn't yes. thought of so that right that's grown it um, and then but but now I guess it's in the place now because I mean I'm super grateful um, due to the quarantining around the world and the situation um i uh I, like i was on my own and so i just worked <laughs> like i just yes. worked and worked and worked and worked and um you. yeah and so i was teaching pilates mat work uh, like last year and i was just doing all that and filming it and putting it up and like thinking all right i'll work behind the scenes on the like what was then the ground school like all the theory behind the work and all the the written work and I started to struggle last year, um, maybe like in like like autumn to winter time. Like I just yes. really found it hard, and yes. I was just you know, in a I funk think, sort of thing, or just not feeling like you had enough, like something, someone refilling, re refilling your cup. It was just the loneliness. It was like, yeah, yeah. I, like you know, I, I'd kind of thrown myself into social media and working, and for the first, you know, kind of from March. It, um, from March onwards and then I just felt like oh it was just it, just it got to the point where it's just like this is hard now and yes. I guess I was doing Pilates but I, I yeah and it, I missed like people and mm -hmm. like just yeah just like like loads of us out there and and I thought there must be other aerialists like me that want to like you know because then I instantly go into like challenge do fitness you know keep yes. yourself going like keep moving you know, yes yeah. yeah, like, what are you going to do? Like, you know, find, you know, talk to people, all that kind of jazz. But it really is exercise and movement that's kept me. And so then I was like, there must be aerialists with other energy like me. So I reached out to aerialists because I was like, I'm just going to offer, you know, like Pilates mat work and see. <laughs> like, crazy. Like, I was getting like 100 Amazing. aerialists a week. Like, there was like, what? I had aerialists like all over the world like I would do it I'd put a class up and I would have 15 aerialists from like all over the world it was like you know and suddenly I would go from like being in my house lonely to like oh my god I've got all these like like <laughs> you know people on aerials and so yes. I started teaching them and we'll just call it like the missing link is but you're basically teaching yes. them Pilates mat work but right. aerialists never would spend the time to go, let me do ground mat work. Like they're too busy mm. in the air and ha like, you know, there's so yes. many other exciting things. So it was like, they were just like, I had them, you know, like in this amazing place of like, oh my God, you're gonna learn so much. You're gonna get stronger. This is like your catapult. Yes. And you're speaking their language. Like I could not walk into that room with airless and say, okay, this is what we're doing. And they see the value in the same way as they would coming from you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Especially as well. You know, I, I had to, I don't know if I had to, but I chose to, I taught, you know, quite um, fast because I, I guess I was worried that um, I would lose their interest and they wouldn't find it that hard and things. Cause, yes. Because your perception of, of Pilates initially was it was too slow and uninteresting. So you want to make yeah. sure that they had a positive <laughs> movement experience yeah. with it right out the gate. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time as, you know, bringing it in, you know, grounding yeah. it, breathing, you know, it was of it, all of that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> I taught it with, you know, like cues that were uh, very aerial specific, you know, like if you're doing hops, if you're doing skin in the cap, you know, all the, their kind of language. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're doing single arm holds or, you know, just aerial language. And, um, and <laughs> you're, you're, you're slowly thing. losing me with the area language. I'm just like smiling and nodding to that part, but I get you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hox, hox, yeah. hox is like one of my favorite hox is when you like hang over the trapeze, you know, on your knees, you know, how you okay. see like a flying yeah. trapeze person. 
Yes. So that's hot, just hanging okay. over. Yeah. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Misty's probably laughing at me right now because I'm like, okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, hox is uh, basically like bridging. If you're doing bridging, but you're doing it hanging from a bar, you know? Okay. Right. Nice. All right. <laughs> I got to try this one time. Yeah. There's, a, there's a comment here from Pregnancy Flies Impact that I wanted to get to because it does speak to exactly what you're saying here too. She says, I waited 10 years before starting a teacher training and I was still like, am I allowed to be doing this? Yeah. Yeah. That, okay, so can you talk about that? am I allowed to be doing this? Did you feel like that too after three years? Oh, like, I'm, completely. Yeah. Completely. Like, like mm -hmm. I, I have to say, like, I think the, the, the now going into being online, so I'm only in my own space. So I'm, I was only like, you know, listening to myself which has really strengthened my self-belief. And then, you know, teaching to people. Um, but then training with aerialists. And then, so this year we launched and we did teacher training online with aerialists. And so now we have Amazing. a mix of, yes, yeah, totally. It's like blow my mind. So now we have aerialists coming in. Cause before I was like, I'm only teaching qualified Pilates teachers. Yes. And then, so now it's open to aerialists, Pilates teachers and enthusiasts. And that's, space that space is like oh martin it's like it's, it's space that's like the aerialists i think are just so open strong and they just want to train and they want to understand and their bodies know yes. it the work and then yes. they um they're like in, incredible souls and people are everything that they do and then but they're like so respectful of of pilates teachers that have done it for you and it just creates this this I mean, I don't even do anything. I don't have to, you know, facilitate it. I just hold the space and mm -hmm. it, it becomes then this interesting, everybody's intrigued about everyone else's world, you know? Yes. Like, Pilates teachers are like, oh my God, you do this like in the air. Wait, it's incredible. And then mm -hmm. aerialists are like, wow, you have all this anatomy and knowledge and oh my God, you know, you know how to teach, you know? So it's kind yes. of like, you, I think instantly people can see each other's strengths. Right. I was going to say, there's, there's a mutual respect that comes yeah. because they're both movement specialists in some way. And the other person has something that they admire and want. Yes. And I just step back up in awe of them and go, oh, I love this. <laughs> like, you guys, like, it, like in the last teacher training, in, it, we had one in, in August. Like, honestly, like, I just had to step back. Cause, and it was like um, incredible. Um, so, and I was teaching it here. So in the studio that I'm in now is Susie. She's watching here. I'm like, this is her studio um, up in Scotland. Mm -hmm. And like, I was just like, Susie, this is unbelievable. Like we had people in the teacher training from uh, South Africa, Hong Kong, Hawaii, um, Colorado, wow. California. Like, and they were all backgrounds. It was like aerialists, Pilates teachers for years, like, you know, like, like complete range and from all over the world. And it was like, just that, that was, it was, it was more than a dream come true. I didn't even dream. Well, I can imagine. No, ex exactly. I, I, <laughs> I, I can hear just the way you're trying to find words for it. Like, uh, uh, it's one thing to have it like written on like a vision board or have it down. Like I'm going to do this in 10 years. Board. Well past your vision. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, wait, like, it's like a whole other like world. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I love that. I love yeah. that. You must look back in that and be like, I have created something amazing and I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> like, I'm uh, just gonna, like, like, I don't think I'm going to do that for another year. I think I'm too in it, you know? Yes. I, That's amazing. Yeah. But that is amazing. But it can't, at the end of the day, though, it's about the, the people making the step to come and join me. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's them mm -hmm. going, oh, wow, what's this? I want to learn. You know, it's, it's all of them that, that break this, that come together. Yes. But isn't there a step before it where you actually put your neck on the line and say, hey, come join me? Where they could say yes or no? Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess. It's definitely not my strong point. That's like all the advertising and the, you know, like I do my thing, I do the work. Like I have, you know, the website and I do the social media, but 
it's just out there for people to then come and, you know, come and join. Like, there's never, you know, it's not me facing somebody and going, come and join me. Like, unless I, you know, unless I was at a festival or, you know, a Pilates event or something and then, you know, in person. Um, yeah. But it's really other people contacting and saying, yeah, I want to do the course, the training. Like, yeah, um, yeah. And then I'm like, yes. So, well, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, but, and, and those, those are the uncomfortable pieces too, right? I mean, like we're, we have to put in work somewhere. We have to, mm. you know, make all do all that stuff in the background. We have to ask sometimes we have to invite, you know, there's, there's going to be some rejections along the way as well. But yeah, uh, but yeah, but then you're here in that sense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abs no, absolutely. Yeah. And in your studio, are you, do, do you do teacher training in your studio as well? Are you? Uh, eventually, clients? eventually, okay. I, I haven't even got that far yet. Cause so this is like, like core conversations. This is like a COVID baby. Like I just, I was working wow. for, I was working for the city of Mississauga, like just like, uh, you know, as a recreation programmer and I was doing some personal training here as I've been doing for many years and teaching my Pilates uh -huh. out of here. And then mm -hmm. when, when COVID hit, my contract didn't renew. And I was like, well, I you know, talked with my oh. business partner here and said, well, let's make a Pilates studio. Let's run with one of the words that Misty gave me on one of core conversations about making a micro business. And we mm -hmm. decided to make a business within the business. And I had like a 200 square foot Pilates studio in this space here. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we started that last year. So bought some equipment, everything kind of fell in place and we just, we just grew it. So it's like a, broadcast studio slash two unit studio where I'm doing a lot of online work and one-on-ones. And just in the last few weeks, we moved into the space here, which is like the, the adjacent room and it's just a bigger space. So now I can do more like, yeah. you know, open gym format classes and larger group stuff. So it's evolving. Mm -hmm. So I, the next phase of that, like once, you know, the world opens up a little bit more and I have more, more than just like my referred clients and my long time people coming in here, is to do that teacher training and to partner. Like I have so many different people that I've connected with that have amazing teacher training programs. And, you know, mm. I want to partner with somebody like I, there's no point in reinventing the wheel when, you know, Heather mm. Herman has core body and the Ralph Bell Bender has, has, you know, his thing from Australia and there's people in Canada that are doing work. Like there's so many amazing studios that I'm just thinking aloud now, I should just be a satellite mm. studio for all of them, right. Where people can just mm -hmm. come in and practice. Because, you know, if you live in this area, where do you go for teacher training, right? So mm. do it remotely, come in here and practice. So, so that's the next step. So when, when the time is right, I'll be doing that because I, I don't have one running at, at this point. Yeah, because you're very um, good at holding space for someone to explore their journey, I think. Like, Thank you. So, and I, I think that, and that's one of the things I've learned, like this teacher training, it, you know, that you got on a definite journey with teacher training as opposed to teaching. And it's, you know, there's one thing that's delivering the exercise and the movement and the, you know, um, the understanding of it. And then the other thing is, how do you hold the space for that person to, to yes. grow and learn? And for them to know that for them to then essentially start to own it. Absolutely. You know, and Debbie, you know what comes to mind when you say that about holding the space? Um, mm. If I was to do a teacher training today, I would go out and try and connect with as many people who are currently personal trainers as possible. Ooh. Right? Because okay. they understand, they understand fitness, they understand anatomy, they understand teaching, they understand yeah. motivation. And the only yeah. thing that they don't have is the language of Pilates. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, Right. So, so that, I think that is a, a group of people that would make sense. And then the holding space part comes mm -hmm. in for me there from when I was in my teacher training programs, the times mm -hmm. that I was taught, like, I don't, I'm not a teacher already, or the times I was, mm -hmm. I was treated like mm -hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't a, a fitness professional. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I, I'm learning Pilates, but that doesn't mean I don't know the body. It doesn't mean I don't know how to teach. So mm when you have people in that space, whole space for them so they can learn the language of bodies, but respect the fact that they're already teachers and motivators and movers. Yes, yes, yes. And, and so, and you know what? Honestly, it's like so energizing when you're around that as well. Cause then when people come in, it's like, 
they're coming in with really inquisitive questions. Yes. And then it makes you like, oh my God, yeah. And you know, sometimes yes. you can be like, I don't know. Or sometimes you can be like, right. One of my key things is feel it, do it, feel it. You tell yes, me. Yes, like, And then you, know, put it, you tell it. me, you put your words on it. Yes. Yeah. Because there's things that, and much like Misty said earlier, like you're, br you're brilliant, right? So I mean, there's a sense that there's things that are just naturally going to come easy to you that you didn't have to put a label on. Uh, movement I wise. think I'm movement having wise. incredible movement teachers wise. and mentors as well. So yes. that thing about you try it, that actually comes from my, like, you know, loads of things that you do, you, you think, oh, that's come from this, that's come from this. That's, you know, I guess I've lived in loads of different <laughs> lands, you know, fitness, right. aerial, da dance, dance, teach it, because then you understand, you know, the, uh, like dance, I just think it, it's, it's, what did you, you know in Pilates when there's that kind of Pilates snobbery thing and that's when I go oh that's dance you know you've all been in a dance studio <laughs> where you're like you know it's like um uh, oh interesting egos yeah whereas I, in I, aerial I, that's why ego. I liked aerial you, you, you don't you, you would never be in an aerial class and treat someone the same way and like dance I'm, I love dance don't get me wrong I love it it's like yeah. you know it challenges right. you but there's, there's egos in dance that, you know, is you, you couldn't have in aerial because in aerial you have each other's back because hmm. you're in the end, you're like, and you're, so you're constantly saying, are you okay? You've got it. No, try this, do that. Like, you're all right. Yes. Like I've done it. It's scary, but you're okay. You know, you, 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 you're there. Like, so I guess I have different worlds of different, where all my different languages come from, but yes, the one of, um, the one of, you know, and even Reiki, you know, or the Thai massage, you know, movement, or, you know, it all, it all comes in. But yes. the one that is, try it, is from a guy called Chris Blagden. And yeah. I'm gonna make sure that I, I, I'm speaking about him like ages. He's on my website and he's a yeah. quiet hidden gem in Edinburgh. So he, yeah. I trained with, he's mentored me for like maybe 15 years, I think nearly. Um, he, runs Edinburgh Pilates Center. So he runs the first studio that was outside of London. So he trained with wow. Alan Herdman, who brought it yes. to the UK. And then he trained with him. But he just keeps himself quiet. Like, because I kept saying to him, run a teacher training or do this. And he's just like, he's like, like nah. he just does the work. He, yeah, yes. he, he, but if ever I would like say and do stuff with him and I'd be like, so what happens if you do that? Or what, and, and what's this? Mean? And he'd be like, try it. Just try it, like, like, and he would he would know, or he would you know understand where it's going, or he wouldn't, and then he'd be like, let's do it. So he kind of led me into like, if I'm gonna ask that question, then why don't I lead myself there and explore, explore it and feel it, it first? And, yes. Yeah. Yes. But I always knew that he was doing it in a way that was like, oh, he already knows. Like. No, you find it. But yeah, yeah. Or, or once yes. I go there, he's then going to put another layer on it for me. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, and, and, and I, it taught me as well, I guess, in that sense of like, just do it. If you're asking the question, yes. then w what about you, you go there and you, and you see, you know, what happens if I do this on my toes or my heels or my, you know, and also that there's no right or wrong. And, 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 right. and, in that way, his brain is like unbelievable because he's like, you know, there's a thousand ways to do everything. And so when you're around him, you're really aware of that because it's like, yes, it, that is, that's an art that that is truly the art of teaching and leading right there. Yeah. We're not giving them answers. You're giving them more questions. And, yeah. You know, and the way that I've experienced that for me is with the time I've done teacher trainings for different pieces of equipment in the fitness world. And they're like, here's the principle, break out with four or five people and make up five exercises for this. And then come back to the group and then demonstrate the exercise you just made up. And then we watch do the exercise and be like, okay, so why did you do that? What are you working now? What is, and he just ask you questions. Is that okay? So if you understand the principles, then you can go anywhere you want with the work, because you understand the principles. But that's the key. 
I think it's knowing, like really knowing, like really knowing. And I think it's time, you know, knowing the principles and knowing the work. Because I could see how, I mean, I see it being diluted, you know, like mm -hmm, with the hammock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I try and not get triggered. I try and go, oh, educate, you know, because sometimes I think, oh no, it's like, y y you could hang around, you know, and, and in, in yes. the hammock and, and not use the principles. Right. And, or you could, you know, do, mm -hmm. Pilates without principles kind of thing. But I think that you're onto an incredible thing saying contacting personal trainers because I think that they would be, I think that they'd be so empowered, blown away and um, love the idea of learning Pilates. And I think they'd be really open to it and all the questioning, especially in the way that you are inviting it as well. Yes, yes. And, and just on that point about being diluted, is it diluted because, like, what defines it as being diluted is the question I have to ask. So if someone yeah. is, if someone understands the principles and comes up with some crazy, ridiculous move, but can explain how it's tied back to the principles, yeah, that's not necessarily diluted. If someone does something that's silly and they are like, well, I just found it on YouTube, that's diluted. Like, you yeah, know, tricks. like that's... I, I call that tricks. So if you're okay. gonna do a trick or a trick or wraps, I don't do tricks or wraps because then okay. I'm like that's land of aerial. So that's our kind of thing. It's like if that's how I kind of root it. Because some of the work I do, you would look at and go, Well, that's not Pilates, but then mm -hmm. I would be like, Yeah, but that's a double crochet wrap that you do in aerial and it's often done you know, with poor alignment. So I'm, I'm teaching a double crochet wrap and then we're working on alignment because that's good, then gonna lead to other Pilates work. So, you know, the, like you say, if you can explain it, there's like um, understanding with it. But yes, I, I, don't, I, I think then that's down to the individual that, that chooses to take it in that pathway. That's then an individual thing, isn't it? Yeah, Maybe. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, it is, it is. Like this is, I've, I've said this story before, like when I was in high school, I took a physics class which I didn't do very good in, but the guy who taught the, the class is uh, a gentleman who, like, if you look on the back of your fridge, there's like the coil on the back of the fridge. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, okay, so that's called a banister coil. And the gentleman that taught my physics class was banister, Mr. <gasps> banister. He is like that's super, cool. super brilliant. Yeah. Right. So because of how brilliant he was, right. I couldn't understand what he was doing because everything came so naturally to him. So people were right. so mad in his class because we couldn't get what he was saying. But this is the thing that he always said to us. Right. Memorize nothing. Understand everything. Oh, my God. He sounds like my brother. So, OK. So my brother did astrophysics. Right. And so when I was younger, <laughs> my brother would just like talk at me. You mean, I'd be like, yes. I, I don't get it. I don't even yes. understand your words. I don't even understand your right. sentence. For, you know, forget. Right. Like he, he's like he's That's like on class. this. Yeah, but right. now <laughs> over years he'll now because I then go to him. But why? But why? And how does that work? And then he'll explain. It. It's like that. Yeah, he'll understand. And he'll say to me, you know, because he was like straight A student, you know, super on it. Mm. And he's just like, yeah, I just like you know, like you, just you get know, can understand. Yeah, I just yeah. get it. But he, that's what he says as well. So I think it's if you can break it down mm -hmm. to explain it really simply and easily. Yes. Then that means when you, that's when you really know it and get it. Right, exactly. So coming full circle with that, we can sit there and just memorize Pilates moves or memorize aerial moves or memorize whatever, or we can understand how they're connected. Mm. Mm. Right, and then we teach mm. people. We could start to you know, relay that to the people we're teaching, and then they can understand it. We're mm. actually educating people, not just giving them workouts. We're educating mm -hmm. people in their own movement to own the movements. And I just realized something as well, because obviously I'm talking about dance scenario, and you're talking about personal trainers. And I think you mentioned to me at Brink about basketball. Is it you used to? Uh, yeah, my son's play. I play football actually. Yeah, but... Okay, and, and yeah. football, but yeah. it, it's like. You, you know, like when, you know, we all like, we teach Pilates and then a, a lot of us, and you, you think, wow, like every, and I know it is done, you know, every, that sport is like, and it's getting in there slowly, but you almost think, yes. should be in there even more, like under Absolutely. every, you know, fitness area, like more Pilates mm -hmm. to, to different areas. 
So I think right. it's, um, it's it, it, it makes everything easier. <laughs> like It does. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's why I did why that post yesterday. Yeah, that's why that that like just a weightlifting post yesterday to say like, this actually is not hurting me. Pilates is helping me, even though I'm not doing bicep curls five days a week. Yeah. My numbers don't drop off. My performance is still good. It's actually better. I'm stronger in different ways. So I wanted to just relay that message that you know this Pilates does make everything else we do better. I missed that post. I'll need to have a look. Yeah, it does. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but it, yeah, it's like I think I think it oh, wow. like saves you energy. Yes, I didn't. Not that I, I don't have a client now, but I didn't realize it was like eleven oh one. Like we are over our time. We're just like lost it, in this conversation. It's so cool. Yeah, they're the best, man. <laughs> yeah, it's four, it's four o'clock in the UK here. Oh, is it nice? Yeah. Um, so, uh, w reflections on Brink from the weekend. Like, what was your thoughts on it? Oh. Uh, do you know, Jenna just is brilliant and she did a brilliant job. And I was really, um, yeah, like the first day, cause it was like midnight for me when I joined you guys. Um, I was yes. like buzzing, I was so buzzing. And then, um, yeah, I, I think it was incredible the way she set it up. I didn't realize it was gonna be like that where it's like you get, you know, video of watching someone and then you get to all chat about it and then yes. video and then yeah. chatting. It's just, I think she's incredibly good at um like organizing that and kind of like obviously like knowing what works for like inter it yes. was like a really good amount of interaction on each part absolutely yes um so yeah and i, I only just um joined it like the last couple of days before but and um yeah i'm a huge fan of jenna i think she's brilliant um and i was i i feel super honored and proud and and everything for you know, for her to be in this industry and um, encouraging folks as well. I think we all need that. Yeah. I think sometimes we don't realize how much we need it. Absolutely. And I, I feel like you're cut from that same cloth. Like, I mean, what she's doing in the space she's doing, it, you're doing it in your space respectively as well. Like, I think you're doing great work. And to see how you're holding space for the people in your world, in the area world, like that's, that's an amazing story to have that many people come out of the woodwork and be like, I need this and wow. And, and I'm sure you like just the number of people just are so grateful that, that you put them together, that they found you, that fills you up oh, just as yeah. much as it fills them, right? Yeah. And I have to actually say as well, because we did that Brink event. So, um, and that was obviously how we um, met and, and, and connected is that when we did like the, um, like the networking, the networking. Like we get five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yes. the networking. And so, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. I'm meeting all these people. So I've actually now, I'm, I'm running that with our, well, so once they get qualified with us in the teacher training, we, they then go on to be an air artist. Yes. And so then because of Jenna's one, I was like, cause obviously I've met everybody. I get to meet them all, but they yes. don't always get to meet, meet each other. Each other. And, right, yes. Yeah, so now, so now I'm gonna, I'm running like a, you know, global networking event. So all the teachers that have qualified with us can then meet each other. And that was came from um, Jenna's Brink event. Cause I was like, oh, that was amazing. Yes. Like I got to meet somebody that's, you know, have five minutes to meet somebody, you know, that's doing what I'm doing. And I, and I, I think that that's really like in our industry, we so work on our own a lot. It's like us and then yes. the clients, us and the clients. So I, I kind of think I'm like all for us each being each other's cheerleaders and because that's the way it's going to grow in a healthy way and us feel connected and supported. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Like, yeah, I've done, I've done a few of those for core conversations. They're great for just connecting people and just, you know, yeah, it's, it's such a, a great way of just pulling your communities together. And I think all of us have that uh, yeah. opportunity to just do that for our respective communities. So yeah. good stuff, my friend. Yeah. But it's really nice to connect, and I'm I'm excited yes. to see where your journey goes next. Oh man, it's uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you, it's just like I I hope, and I hope this for everyone who's watching too that like you blow away everything that was on your vision board with where you end up. Like you just yeah, you did some, you're doing some great work, Debbie. Thank you so much. Oh no, thank you, thank you. It's really great to connect. And yeah, mm. I, I, here's to, do you know what? Sometimes it's just write a vision board, get visuals on there. And then it does. It, sometimes you blow, you know, once you've just put it up, you just have to trust in it. Yep. And 
magic happens. Yes, exactly. All right, I will message you after. And I just want to say thank you to everyone in the chat. Thanks for all your comments and for cheering Debbie on. It was super fun today. Aww. Yes, thank you all. All right, my friend. Yeah, and if thank anyone you. has any questions, then just ask. Yes, absolutely. All right, good stuff. Okay, have a great day. Awesome. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Bye.